What up everybody? So last time I was doing a video, that was like, I don't even want to look. I think it's over a month ago that I was actually putting stuff out. I was working on this um, go-kart starter. So I finished up, this is the side that will actually engage with the crankshaft of the cart. And that was already done. I think I had one bearing on it last time. So um, now it's got the other, or not bearing, clutch. Uh, now it's got the other clutch and the snap ring on there, so that's all, you know, how it needs to be. That's done. I know, I know. I didn't record any machining for this next part. So I've been super busy, like always, everyone says that. But yeah, I just, in between a job and, and a little bit of time, I just had a chance to, to crank this piece out and I had been wanting to get this cart starter like finished so much that I'm like, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock it out and talk about it when I'm done. So here's the part. Boom, ooh, ah. This is the part that's actually gonna go in the drill chuck. Ooh. I don't know if I got a little cocky after making the, the steel vice jaws, those were like an A36 hot roll, or the, the first part, which I think is the same metal. Um, I don't for sure remember, but I'm assuming based on what I paid for it and everything back in the day. I think it was 1018 cold rolled, and that's what I asked for when I got this stuff. And I even went back and verified on the website, that's like the main thing that they carry is 1018 cold rolled, if you just ask for cold rolled steel. so. I don't know what it was, but memory serves that that thing cut pretty nicely, uh, especially for being steel, you know, it's a little harder. Uh, it's gonna be a little louder than aluminum and everything, but for the most part, I don't remember a lot of chatter or anything like that. Totally different story when I went to mill this thing. Um, I think for starters, I was milling this pocket. And so I was, you know, with stock um, Tormach coolant system, chips were not getting evacuated out of here like they should be. So I know I was recutting chips. I know what that sounds like. And that was nasty enough. And then, um, I don't know, it just, it didn't sound right. I was running the same surface beat per minute. I was running 350. And so that equated with a half inch cutter to I think like 26 or 2700 RPM. And it just sounded terrible, honestly. Like I, I, I just kind of cringed and let it run, but I'm pretty sure I didn't like tore up the ends of a, a pretty new um, half inch end mill. So got it done though. And before I flipped it and did this, I started reading. One thing, I know I had seen it before, never really um, internalized it, I guess, because it totally went in one ear and out the other, is that if you are milling around a circle, let me make sure I get this right. If you're going around the outer diameter of a circle, that path that you are taking is longer than the path that you are actually cutting. So if you want the right chip thickness, you actually have to speed up your cutter. Now, if you're cutting the inside diameter, it's the opposite, you need to slow down. The path you are taking is shorter. And so I think after remembering that and kind of realizing it, I kind of stumbled upon it in a calculator um, online, just one of those, you know, plug in your feeds and speeds and, and spit it out with like chip thinning and all that. Um, I think that's what my issue might have been is that I was overloading this. I think I had it set to like one and a half thou per tooth. So in reality, I could have been cutting three, four, five thou per tooth, especially when I just plunged in here because I had drilled a half inch um, pilot hole, plunge in here with a half inch end mill and just start working it out. Like that would be the worst case scenario. You, you want your pocket to be a little bit bigger, you know, talking like, I don't know, little, maybe not twice as big, but you definitely want some, some leeway in there when you're plunging into stock. So I think that might've been a problem. Um, when I did go to do this one, I had figured that out, adjusted my speeds accordingly. And to be honest, it still sounded like crap. So at that point I figured, um, at 350 surface feet per minute, I was pretty low, relatively. Um, I got that number off of the Lakeshore Carbide, um, just steel general purpose end mill chart that they provide on their website. And theirs goes up to 550 for, for the low carbon steel on there. So I figured, you know, let's just bump it up. And when I bumped it up to, uh, I think it was 3200 RPM, left the chips, um, or the left the feeds the same, so at that point I was taking a, a little bit smaller bite every time, but it actually sounded a lot better. Um, it, it sang through it. 
you know, I still, I don't know, I'm not super happy with it because by the time I got to that point and it was actually running okay, I just let it go. But I had gotten to the point where I was only taking 50 thou width of cut and a quarter inch depth of cut with a half inch cutter. So, you know, I, I follow John Saunders at NYC CNC a lot and he typically runs at least 100% depth of cut. He, he talks about how you can go to 200% depth of cut um, based on the diameter of the tool. So I was trying to run my half inch end mill with half inch depth of cut and it was not liking it at all. Uh, I was trying to run it, he, he says a lot of times you can run 20% width of cut. So I was trying to run 100 thou on a half inch cutter for width of cut. Wasn't having that either. So I ended up running, you know, 50% depth of cut, 10% width of cut. I mean, got the part done. The part looks nice, but kind of wish I could be pushing that cutter a little bit more. Um, at this point, the only thing I can really think of is its rigidity in the Tormach itself, or maybe in the, maybe my spindle's a little worn. Maybe my, my gibs need to be adjusted. You know, something along those lines where it's just, it's not having it. So either way, that was kind of my rant about how this went. Um, other than that, the part turned out good. Um, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to go ahead and put it together. she is together look at that so i got these two set screws in the side and those actually are meant to engage with those little tiny wimpy keyways i don't even think they earn the right to be called a keyway right there um, in the outer race of the bearing and i noticed if i snugged it way up then i'd feel kind of a rough spot so i loosened them up um, at some point i may put some loctite on there um, probably sooner than later just to make sure that nothing tries to come apart on me while it's spinning because um, that would be bad other than that you kind of saw me fighting with the snap ring right here um, i kind of figured out that if i loosen these let the bearings seat all the way then the snap ring would go in and i know it's engaged i'm not 100 percent sure that it's seated um, right right at the very center of it but these two ends are totally seated so there's absolutely no way that this thing is coming apart so there it is boom and it has a ton of power. I can't make the thing spin backwards by myself. So I think it should work to crank the cart over. Everything in my garage is a mess again. It's amazing how that works. See, no problem cranking it over. That's with compression there. 
All right, so I think that's gonna be about it for this week. Um, really just wanted to tie this one up and I know I haven't put stuff out in a long time. So there you go, it is a thing and it's happening and I can't wait to actually start that sucker with it. Have a good one, I'll see you next time.